Hello, hello, and welcome. Thank you for your patience. As you can imagine, today's story is um, really pivotal in the changing of the tide of the United States. And I just want to say that uh, it did take me some time to pull a lot of this together. As you'll notice, I did change the time at least twice and then still didn't make it on time because of how pressing this is. I really don't know where to start, you guys. So I think what we'll do is we'll just start. I'm just going to pick one of the pieces that I had to pull together today, and we'll all uh, work it out together. And I thank you in advance for your um, patience with this. Let me start by saying what's going on right now in the United States is all connected. And I know that with the brilliance of those who are here, you'll agree. Every single bit of this is connected. There is not one piece that's happened in the United States recently that has nothing to do with the other one. Does that make sense? Every single thing that we're looking at right now has something to do with another piece, even down to the P. Diddy piece. And then biblically, I'm going to show you that. You know, uh, we're going to use some biblical text today. It's almost impossible for us not to. And here's why I, I would not be doing you any justice if I did not show you the connected dots. Now you do with it what you choose, you accept it or not, but you just cannot deny the correlation. And we're not looking at anything in revelation or anything creepy like that at all. We're just going to look at how each and every one of the pieces of what we're about to read today and look over together today, even down to the man who owns the ship that ran into the bridge. This is very important. Because what it tells us significantly is it symbolizes the real life metaphor of the United States and its collapse. That's exactly what we're looking at right now. Each thing interconnected to one another. Every piece that we've seen from the uh, immigrants coming over from Venezuela and have overrun New York to those same type of people that are overrunning Chicago and Los Angeles. Every single piece that we're going to look at today is climactic, but definitely not the end, but it is climactic in the scheme of things with destroying the very infrastructure of this nation. The names are significant. The coordinates are significant. If you are on the headlines with the voice channel, you'll see that the thumbnail outlined the coordinates of this very place. Every single piece must be noticed. And then after we notice that, we've got to decide what we're going to do with that information on a personal level, right? Because it's not enough for us to uh, go from one live to the next live to the next live and see what everybody has to say on their channel and then do absolutely nothing, which is what I know a lot of you guys are not down for, right? You guys have family and friends and members of your family that you said things to and they weren't down for it. And all of a sudden to their downfall, here it comes after you've warned them. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. First of all, Francis Scott Key. Hmm. Francis Scott Key, as we already know, is the man who wrote the uh, Star Spangled, he, the National Anthem. Okay. He wrote the National Anthem. He was born on August 1st, 1779 in Frederick County, Maryland, United States. Now, here's the thing. His family emigrated here from England, as most of those folks back in that time did. What this is telling us is all of that is old and gone, and they are destroying the very infrastructure of what then was built. As you know, this particular bridge was built specifically over a spe over that body of water, because at that time, there was only one way to get in or out of there, and they could only get one ship in or out, so they built this. A few important pieces I want you guys to take notes on from an educational standpoint. That's where we're coming from with this video because today we will be using a lot of information that does not belong to the Felicia Lockhart Group LLC. I want to put that out there right now. We are letting you know right now that this is covered under the Copyright Act of 1976. Why? Because we will be using this information for educational purposes. We will be using this information today because I got to share this with you guys. So they took a video of mine down that was put up two years ago and it was called, what is patriotism? They took that down. So I've got to let you know that every single thing you're about to see here is used under the guise of fair use for the purposes that are illustrated in 107 of the 1976 uh, uh, Fair Use Act. Okay. 
So going back, <clears throat> the significance of the names. The first thing I want to point out to you, besides Mr. Francis Scott Key, it goes all the way down to the money, baby. This whole thing goes all the way down to the money. Uh, I want to show you guys this story, and I want you to read along with me. In 2023, there was an interstate that was hit. And it was very significant because people were not able to get through for weeks and weeks. And originally what they said after this happened was, we don't know when it's going to uh, be able to get through. And so what happened to my own knowledge is that people in that area began to say, hey, yo, wait a minute. No, they began to blast this thing on the internet. They began to blast it on uh, Twitter. Well, now X. And they began to say, there's no way you're gonna hold us up like this. We cannot get in or out. There's another piece and I keep, I'm gonna dance, you guys. I gotta dance around because this is just like all this information hit me at once this morning. Memories of things that I had, stories that I was already working on, pieces that I was already putting together and kept scratching my head, not knowing where they come. And here goes the culmination. The 2023 Interstate 95 Highway Collapse. If you guys remember hearing that, please let me know. Okay, please let me know. The interstate collapse on June 11th. I need you all who have the ears to hear and the heart to know, please focus in on the times, the dates, the numbers, and everything. Because I want to show you sometimes things that look like an accident. Baby, don't you know sometimes it's not? Sometimes it ain't. I'm here to tell you that. So as we look at this, we see that there was this incident on June 11, 2023, a tanker truck carrying gasoline lost control while it was attempting to exit the highway and caught fire under the overpass carrying Interstate 95, I-95 at the Pennsylvania Route 73, PA 73 Cotman Avenue, the interchange in Taconi neighborhood of the Northeast Philadelphia. The extreme heat caused the northbound lanes to collapse and damage the southbound lanes, resulting in a roughly 9 or 14 kilometer closure of both directions on I-95 between Betsy Ross. There are no accidents. Remember the focus, the collapsing of the infrastructure of the U.S., that's where we're headed. So everything I'm talking about is going to head there. And we're going to dance around again. It's not going to just be fluid. And, and then we're going to match this. No, we're going. So it was between uh, Armingo Avenue and PA 63 Woodhaven Road, exit 63. After emergency construction of a temporary roadway, uh, traffic resumed June 23rd, less than two weeks after the fire. But prior to that, what this is not saying is that they were telling everybody, oh, it could be done. It could be down for a long time. Oh, we don't know how long it's going to be. Oh, it'll be a good amount of time before it's back up and running. And we just don't know. And it's just going to take some. Them folks got on Twitter. Those people started to complain. They started to blast. Hey, how are we getting to work? How are we getting our goods? How are things coming in or out? Well, you can't just leave us like this. Some of us are stranded. What's up? So a similar incident was seen in 2007 where a large fire caused the collapse of a connector in the MacArthur maze in Oakland, California. MacArthur maze. Look at the names. And in 2017, a large fire collapsed on the overpass uh, that was a part of I-85 in Atlanta, Georgia. I remember that specifically. I was still living in Atlanta or in a suburb of Atlanta at the exact same time that this happened. And they said it was a homeless man who had caught on, who had caught like some tires or something on fire or a chair, something he was sitting on, but it took a whole bridge full of rebar, uh, all types of concrete that was made by uh, engineers who knew how to create things to withstand heat. This one homeless man who later went to jail for it and was let out after he was, you know, represented by a very famous lawyer, he was able to take the whole entire overpass down there in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, it's important to note, and I'm glad I've told people this, because in 2014, I got a vision while on a highway that the way that they were going to begin to take this country down, and I'm saying it because I've said it to people and I have, I have witnesses. I said, I saw a vision, and the vision that I saw was they were going to take us down by transportation, by hitting bridges with trucks. I saw it. I said, trucks? 
transportation, the highways. I said, that's how they're going to do it. And some people listened, remembered, listened, and it went over their head. Others remember it to a T. This is that. Now, I'm going to close this out. And you know what, you guys? These notes are going to be heckified if you guys want to carry them all. Let me go ahead and put this on a sticky note now so that I have that for you. Uh, copy it and put it over here because at the end of the show, sometimes I'm not even, even to remember unless I go through my history of what, what it was that we were covering. So let me go ahead and put this here, create a new note right there. All right. So that, at least that way we have it. All right. So we got that one. I have to collapse this because I have too many tabs open and thank you guys for being with us today. Thank you so very much. There's also a video that I want to show you guys that I put together today, and I want you to look at very closely at how the bridge went down, which I'm sure some of you have already done that, how it went down, and who owned that particular um, ship. That's important. Everything's important. All right, so hold on. Okay. Let me go here to live and get you guys up and running here. Thank you for your patience with my silence. I remember my days of radio, they used to say that silence was death to the disc jockey. <laughs> and that was right. And it's the same thing with this. All right, so we got that done. Now let me go over to the other channel and do that too. So you guys have everything at the same time. I want everything to be in, uh, you know, succinct. Hey, thank you guys for watching that Houdini video the other day. For those who understand, you knew what I meant. There's a purpose when I do some stories and sometimes you don't see me here because not every story is worth jumping on to include what I was about to do this morning, which was about Mr. P. Diddy himself. The P. Diddy story uh, is a distraction, but it is a necessary uh, thing. It is something very necessary, but it's definitely a distraction. Why do you say that, Felicia? I say that because if you really want to look at it and you really want to understand what's up, you would not be paying attention to this if this was all, if, if listening to hip hop was all you was into. If all you was into was hip hop, you wouldn't be tripping at all on this. And a lot of people aren't, they're like, oh, gee whiz, that's so terrible. This happened. All right. All right. Let me get out of this because I need to get out of here. I'm, I'm in the studio. I need to get out of that. Here we go. Do you guys understand that this has everything to do with the money? <laughs> Let me get in here. My mind is moving, y'all, and I apologize, but I just, I don't know. Let me give you this story right here. We're going to look at this piece. We're going to look at the actual cargo ship itself. So we're going to read what we already know. A container ship lost power and rammed into a major bridge in Baltimore early Tuesday, causing the span to buckle uh, into the river below and plunging a construction crew and several vehicles into the dangerously cold waters. Rescuers pulled out two people, but six, two times six, but six others were missing. The ship's crew issued a mayday call moments before the crash took down the Francis Scott Key Bridge, enabling authorities to limit vehicle traffic on the span, Maryland's governor said. The ship struck one of the bridge's supports, causing the structure to collapse like a toy. It tumbled into the water in a matter of seconds, a shocking spectacle that was captured on video and posted on social media. The vessels caught fire and thick black smoke billowed out of it. Listen closely to what I'm saying. With the ship barreling toward the bridge at a very, very rapid speed, authorities had just enough time to stop cars from coming over the bridge, the Maryland governor said. These people are heroes. They saved lives last night. The crash happened long before the busy morning commute on the bridge, which stretches 2.6 kilometers. The six people still unaccounted for were a part of a construction crew filling potholes on the bridge, said Paul Widefield, the state's transportation secretary, and one of those rescued was taken to the hospital. Quote, never would you think that you would see, physically see the key bridge tumble like that. It looked like something out of an action movie, he said. An unthinkable tragedy is what he called it. 
The collapse is almost sure to create a logistical nightmare for months, if not years. Along the East Coast, shutting down ship traffic at the port of Baltimore and snarling cargo and commuter traffic. Here's what Senator Johnny Ray Selling said. Losing this bridge will devastate the entire area as well as the entire East Coast. Highway signs as far as Virginia warn drivers of the delays associated with the closure of the bridge. Authorities said sonar had detected vehicles in the water, which is about 50 feet or 15 meters deep. The water temperature was 47 degrees Fahrenheit, 8 degrees Celsius, before dawn on Tuesday, according to a buoy that collects data for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Earlier, Kevin Cartwright, the director of communications for the Baltimore Fire, told the Associated Press that several vehicles were on the bridge at the time of the collapse, including one the size of a tractor trailer truck. The bridge came down in the middle of the night of the night when traffic would be lighter than during the day when thousands of cars whew, transversed the span. Energy Marine Group. Synergy, Synergy Marine Group, which manages the ship called the Dali, Dali, confirmed the vessel hit a pillar of the bridge at about 1.30 a.m. while in control of one or more pilots who are local specialists who navigate the vessels safely into ports. The ship is owned by Grace Ocean Private LTD. But look at what I saw. Oh, well, no, let me finish this. Then I want to show you some construct some, some conflicting stories about that. Okay, now it said that all crew members, including the two pilots on board, were accounted for, and there were no reports of any injuries, so that's a good thing. The ship was moving at eight knots, roughly nine miles an hour, or 14.8 kph, kilometers per hour, the governor said. As the sun rose on Tuesday... As the sun rose on Tuesday, jagged remnants of the bridge could be seen jutting up from the water surface, the on-ramp abruptly where the span once began. Cartwright said that some cargo appeared to be dangling from the bridge, which spans the Patasco River at the entrance to a busy harbor. The river leads to the port of Baltimore, a major hub for shipping on the East Coast, opened in 1977. The bridge is named for the writer of the Star Spangled Banner. We all know that. Maryland Transportation Secretary Paul Wyfield said the vessel traffic into and out of the port would be suspended until further notice, though the, fa though the facility uh, was still open to trucks. The governor declared a state of emergency and said he was working to get federal resources deployed. The FBI is on the scene, but said there was no credible information to suggest terrorism. President Joe Biden was briefed, but at the time that I put this up or let you guys know that we would be going live, I had not seen him say anything about it. I apologize if he said something thus far. Somebody in the chat let me know. I'm not on that side to see your comments. But if you do know that he says something, let me know. Because at the time that I put this up, he hadn't said a word, not one peep. Now, the Dolly was headed from Baltimore to Colombia, Sri Lanka, and flying under a Singapore flag, according to data from the marine traffic. The container ship is about 300 meters or 985 feet long with about 157 feet or 48 meters wide, according to the website. Now, Danish shipping giant Maersk said that it had chartered the vessel. No Maersk crew and personnel were on board, however. The collapse caused Maersk share at the NASDAQ Copenhagen to plummet 2% in early Tuesday trading. Last year, the Port of Baltimore recorded a 52.3 million, million tons of foreign cargo worth $80 billion, according to the state. In addition to cargo, more than 444,000 passengers cruised out of the port in 2023. Now, the story has been corrected to show that Grace 
Ocean uh, Pacific owns the ship, not Synergy Marine Group. But that's not what I saw. What I have here is not them. Let me feel, because I got a thousand tabs. I wish I could show you guys. And you can't rename them. If you guys let me know if you can rename these tabs once you put them up. Because I wish I knew how to do it if you could. Here's the guy that owns it. This is Captain Rajesh Uni. According to what I was able to find this morning, is the person who owns it. That, that, that's who owns it, according to what I was able to find. Now, let me give this to you. Because when I put in, listen, when I put in who owns it, I didn't get this other company. When I put in who owns it, it was this dude. All right. And, and today is 2024. That's what it said today, 2024, that this man is who owned it. Here you go. Let me show you who he is. And I love the rain. We've had rain all night long, although it is sort of concerning. Okay. Here you go. This is the dude they say owns it. Originally today, because I asked who owned the ship, it said Synergy Group. Then I said, who are the major players? Who is the head of it? It was this company, Synergy Group. So I'm going to read the information that I have. And if there are any corrections that need to be made, count it to my head, not my heart. Because there's another company they say owns it. But this is what it showed this morning. Profile of the gentleman, Captain Rajesh Uni, the founder and CEO of Synergy Group. Uni's holistic approach to ship management makes Synergy unique. What Tell us about your background and education. Well, I hail from the southern state of India. My father was a government employee and my mother stayed at home parent. Like many Indians before the globalization period, we belonged to the middle class. My younger brother and I never lacked necessities, but we were not raised affluent. Today, I run a successful company, but I've never forgotten my roots and continue to remain grateful for my value-based upbringing. Now, what attracted you to maritime history? Necessity. The financial situation in my house was not improving. Being the eldest, I felt duty-bound to help my family and decided, starting, start, decided to start working immediately. In those days, the merchant navy was a lucrative profession. So after finishing school, I went to sea as a cadet with Univan Ship Management, a Hong Kong-based ship management company. While working, I earned my industry certifications from LBS College of Advanced Maritime Studies and Research in Mumbai. From cadet to the third officer, second officer, and chief officer, I attained the rank of master in 1999 at the age of 26. I never imagined back then that I would end up spending most of my life in the maritime industry. Our industry is tough, but built on strong people bonds. Seafarers often share a special camaraderie. And the friendships you forge remain for a long time. I've been lucky to meet my mates through this profession. What inspired you to found Synergy? I've spent more than a decade in the ship management industry, and I found that despite high productivity level costs, the level of service was subpar. It was still subpar. The only way ahead was to continue to accept the norm or take a leap of faith and challenge the status quo. Along with a few like-minded friends and the support of my mentor, Captain Kutsaya Abe, president of Nissan Quinn, a 120-year-old family-run Japanese shipping company, and others, we decided to take the lead and set up the world-class comprehensive technical ship management service based on openness, trust, and reliability. That philosophy was incorporated as Synergy Chinia India in 2006. So now the name Synergy, when we're going to find out what it's about as far as this company is concerned for us, it's always been about team and never about the individual. The sum of the knowledge, capital, and the talent is always greater than the individuals working independently. Synergy seemed the apt name for a company that believes in the collective efforts. Here's the deal. All of that Asia, all of that area, all of those areas are a part of the I-M-E-U-C. Yeah. So it's dealing with all the Indian, all of the um, Asian maritime, all of that. 
Remember the story that we covered in September that was dealing with the maritime corridor that was going to be coming through from Israel, coming straight in through to Asia? Here is my belief. My belief is all that we are seeing right now that's coming to the collapse of ships uh, running into built, running into the this right here, what we're seeing here, and trucks running into certain things that are corridors, not to mention the fact that this particular bridge just got a boatload of money in the infrastructure plan that we just saw last Friday. A boatload of money, which is a good thing, right? Right on time. I mean, not saying that there's anything going on. I'm just saying that, hey, they'll be able to use those funds eventually, right? To help them to further this. All of this stuff is meant to change the entire land, the entire area, all of it. Here's my philosophy on this whole thing. This is my thought process. My thought process is you have now a need to no longer use certain waterways to bring in ships, to bring in uh, anything that's going to be used here in the United States. This particular ship hitting this particular bridge is going to slow us down for ages. There are people who stand to make money from this. Lots of people. And there are companies as well as small businesses in that local area that will shut down undoubtedly because they're using the traffic that comes across to keep them afloat. Well, if the middleman is no longer there, which is usually middle America that has small businesses, those can go away. They don't care. There are large, large areas and large companies, I should say, that will stand to gain from construction companies to metal companies to everything. Now we'd have to look into see to, to follow the money, the, to be fair and follow the money. We would have to know each and every one of those companies that are going to gain financially, unfortunately, because of this. We got to keep our minds in the right place and that is to follow the money. So now we see who he is. All right, this is him. Let me make it a little bigger. Do you guys not understand that there is some significance to certain individuals always being at the helm of, of everything financial here in the United States lately? I hope we are getting this. The United States is done. Now the new cats are actually putting in place what they want right in front of us, right in front of us even down to New York playing a huge role into this. Listen, just recently, we see that individuals that are in New York are ravaging it. They're ravaging it. They're pillaging. They're taking over homes. They're taking people's houses, squatting in them, and then the people who own the house get arrested. All of this is connected. All of New York some parts, especially the areas that there were, you know, Hispanics, lower, um, lower uh, median income, whites and blacks in those areas. Those areas are the places that are being overrun by these illegal aliens. Keeping that in mind, you'd have to ask yourself, why is this being allowed to happen? And why are they funding it so greatly? They're funding it because of the purpose of clearing out that area for it to be at the end of this maritime corridor that's coming from Israel. This is my idea. This is what I'm saying. Nobody told me this. But wouldn't it stand to reason that the only way for us to have any idea of Babylon falling is if it had some great maritime financial gain? Think about it. All of New York, the specific areas we're talking about, is being ravaged. So what's going to happen? More and more people are going to jump ship and run out. They're all going to leave. And when they leave, because they can't even build any new houses, that's okay. Just bulldoze them down. And this whole entire area is going to look just like Tyre in the Bible. This whole entire area is going to be exactly like Corinth, a port city. And what was going on in the port cities? There was worshiping of all of their different gods. There was money being exchanged. There were financial things that were happening from one side to the other. They were bringing things from afar off all the way in. This was a very corrupt area. Any port city is always going to have corruption. You look at the history, it's going to have corruption. They're clearing this area out so that they can put it all together. Now, in 40 years when I'm not here, 
If one of your, one of your grandbabies is here, maybe they'll remember this. Maybe you could share it with somebody else. But I guarantee you this is strategic in the plan that the United States that is in agreement with this particular maritime corridor with Netanyahu is all a part of the same thing. Let me come over to this side for a second so that I can see where we're going here. We've got more information that I want to show you guys. First of all, let me greet all of you. I see a lot of you here. Let's take a break. We've been at it for 30 minutes. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to look at the barbecue video. And after we look at the barbecue video, we're going to come right back, okay? So let's take a quick break. First of all, I want you to see this because this is what I have here. Let me remove this. Did anybody see the movie Leave the World Behind? Did anybody see the movie Leave the World Behind? Because if you did, this movie is playing out what we're seeing right here in part. Not all, but in part. All right, so let me add this to the stage. Let me take him off and let me give this to you guys so you can see the commercial. And then after that, I'll show you the other. Hey everyone, it's me, Felicia of the Lockhart Perspective and Headlines with a Voice. I wanna tell you a little secret. This is what I used to do because I don't do it anymore. I would go to the store, buy the barbecue sauce, pour it inside of a bowl, put a whole bunch of different spices, a dash of brown sugar, a dash of maple, and a dash of mustard, stir it all around, and everybody would be like, oh my gosh, this is the best, this is the best. But I was exhausted after all of that, and a lot of times I couldn't remember how many dashes of what I put in it. But I don't have to do that anymore, because now I just go to Judge Joe Brown's website, and I order his three-pack of bottled barbecue sauce. It is by far the best, and I do mean the best barbecue sauce sauce I've ever eaten and when you go to his website and you order his three pack you'll see exactly what I mean head on over to jjbbbq.com and order Judge Joe Brown's barbecue sauce you'll be glad you did and you're gonna tell me about it I know you will so for those of you who already ordered some of his barbecue I know you agree with me now you know I ain't a fibber it's some good stuff isn't it hmm all right, so now we're gonna look right now because remember I told you there I'd be I'd be a cuckoo bird not to show you <laughs> the significance of what's going on biblically. I'd be a cuckoo bird to avoid that, and I cannot avoid it. For those of you who would be offended by anything biblical, I respect you and I understand. Um, if you'd like to click off now and come back, I appreciate you and I get it. Um, but I have to share this because I would be remiss if I did not. This is the proclamation against Tyre. Now, a lot of people hear me quote that passage from Revelation 18 that says, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. This is where that passage came from. And it came to pass in the 11th hour on the first day of the month that the word of Yah came to me saying, son of man, because Tyre, Tyre has said against Jerusalem, aha, she is broken. Now, listen, please understand that not every place you see that the Khazars are, that ain't necessarily saying they belong to Yah. I'm just going to put that out there. And you know what? I can take the hit. So if y'all want to hit me, hit me. But that's what I'm going to say. So because Tyre has said against Jerusalem, aha, she is broken, who was the gateway of the peoples. Now she is turned over to me and I shall be fulfilled. She is laid waste. Therefore, thus saith Yah, behold, I am against you, O Tyre, and will cause my many nations to come against you, as the sea causes its waves to come up. And they shall destroy the walls of Tyre and break down her towers. And I will also scrap her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock. And it shall be a place for spreading nets in the midst of the sea, for I have spoken, says the Lord, Yah. I shall become, it shall become plunder for nations. Pay attention. Also her daughter villages, which are in the field shall be slain by the sword. Then they shall know that I am, Yah, I am the Lord. For thus says the Lord God, and for I'm just going to read it straight through from here on, okay, as it's written. For thus says the Lord God, behold, I will bring against Tyre from the north Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the king of kings with horses and chariots with horsemen and, the, and an army with many people. 
He will slay with the sword of your daughters, villages in the field. He will heap up a siege mound against you, a mound. Mounds are very important. Will build a wall against you and raise a defense against you. He will direct his battering rams against your walls and with his axes, he shall break down your towers because of the abundance of his horses, their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen, the wagons and the chariots when he enters your gates as men enter a city that he has that has been breached with the hooves of his horses, he will trample all your streets. He will slay your people by the sword and your strong pillars will fall to the ground. They will plunder your riches and pillage your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. Let's stop. They will plunder your riches. Anybody in the chat want to tell me, have you seen any riches being plundered? Have you seen anybody running into the stores, smashing and grabbing out Louis Vuitton, Gucci, um, uh, uh, YSL? Has anybody seen that? They will de and destroy your pleasant houses. Has anybody seen this woman who just had her house taken over? by squatters from old, old, from other places where they arrested her when she went in and said, hey, yo, wait a minute. I ain't been gone but a minute. This is my mama's house. Who are you? What you doing here? And the police arrested her. Oh, Babylon is falling. It's falling. Yeah, Babylon going down. Already down because the new people who own it is doing reconstruction in your face. So pillage your, pillage your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your houses. What did we just see the other day? Breaking down the walls. What did we just see with them batteramming by human beings going and pushing down the, the fences and the walls and pushing through and coming in? Ooh. I will put an end to the sound of your songs. You ain't hear no more songs being played down there in New York right now. You remember how they used to all be in the underground right there where the trains go in and out of the subways playing their music, the songs. They have people out there playing the guitar, making a little bit of money. Hmm. Yeah. The sounds of your song and the sounds of your heart shall be heard no more. A lot of people down there with the violins and all kinds of stuff. Now, what do they have? Allegedly, they have the uh, National Guard down there. Superseding the police who are supposed to be if you need any help down there. Well, that's a psyop. It's it's a, it's an it's a it's a total great way for them to show you how to get ready for martial law because they have to soften the mind. It can't just be on the television. They have to soften the mind in real time because when you take over an area and you got to get people conditioned for their own safety to be in the house at a certain time or these dudes who are going to be replaced in a minute. They ain't going to look like you and me. They're going to be looking like the mother cats. But I digress. I will make you like the top of a rock. You shall be a place for spreading nets and you shall never be rebuilt. For I, the Lord, have spoken, says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God to Tyre, will the coastlands not shake at the sound of your fall? When the wounded cry and, the and when slaughter is made in the midst of you, then all the princes of the sea shall come down from their thrones, lay aside their robes and take off their embroidered garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit on the ground, tremble every moment and be astonished at you. Oh, look at them. And they will take up lamentations for you and they'll say, oh, you have perished. Oh, one inhabited by seafaring men. Oh, renowned city who was strong at sea. She and her inhabitants who caused their terror to be on all her inhabitants. Now the coastlands tremble on the day of your fall. Yes, the coastlands by the sea are troubled at your departure. See, this is a, this is a progressive takeover, a progressive destruction of sorts. 
when I make you a desolate city. For thus says the Lord God, when I make you a desolate city like the cities that are not inhabited, they're going to wipe all of them people that live in New York out. If you don't understand what I'm saying, baby, let me, let me make it plain. And like my friend girl's daddy say, let me put it down here where the cows can get it. They're clearing it out. All of New York is going to be cleared. All of Los Angeles, California, California is going to be cleared, especially the coastal areas, because they need your space. So the only way to get your space since y'all ain't moved is to make it happen. Now, you ain't going to be able to get back and forth across that bridge. No goods are going to get back and forth across that bridge. Nobody's going to be able to get back and forth across that bridge. And if you can't get across that bridge to get to work, you ain't got no job. Eventually, stuff going to play out. You're not going to move any, merch, any merchandise across there. No, you're not. No, you're not. Small guys, done. Yeah. For thus saith the Lord God, when I make you a desolate city like the cities that are not inhabited, when I bring the deep upon you and the great waters cover you. Hmm. Wouldn't that happen out there in San Francisco and all the Northern California areas just recently? They were having unbelievable high, high tides that resembled almost like a, like a tsunami of sorts, even though it was not that dramatic at all. But it was covering a lot of land, wasn't it? It was covering a lot of houses, wasn't it? Hmm. It'll, get it'll, it'll get worse, trust and believe me. It's got to before. It's just like when you're redecorating a bathroom. You say it, you got to change it. And then all of a sudden you say, well, let me go ahead and hire somebody to come in and fix it. And when they come in, they destroy it. And you're looking like, wow, this is terrible. Well, after that, it's going to look better. I hope you hear me. I hope you hear me. Then I will bring you down with those who descend into the pit to the people of old, and I will make you dwell in the lowest part of the earth and the places desolate from antiquity with those who go down to the pit so that you may never be inhabited. Not that area with you. That's all going to be commerce. Every single area down there is going to be commerce because every port city is commerce based. Every port city is commerce. There ain't no reason for a port city not to be commerce. Everything down there going to be owned by the same conglomerate, by the same companies. Everything down there from the pizza shop that the people who coming through, come to eat, is going to be owned by one big conglomeration, one big company, one big conglomerate. If you want to go buy something that says, welcome to New York or welcome to Baltimore or welcome to wherever, it's all going to be owned by the same company. Why? Because they need that money. Yeah, said that. Like that. I will... It says, uh, so that you may never be inhabited and I shall establish glory in the land of the living. I will make you a terror. I will make you a terror and you shall be no more. Though you are sought for, though people will for long and people will remember, you're going to be sought for, but you're not going to be no more. You will never be found again, not in this state. No, you won't. If we go over, and this is going to be the last biblical context that we're going to use. For those who are a little upset about it, it's okay. All righty. Uh, mm, yeah. So let's start here at verse 12, Ezekiel 27. The last one was Ezekiel 26. And we're going to be done with this and going over to the next. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches with silver, iron, and tin, and lead. And lead. And they traded in thy fairs, Javan, Tubal, and Misha, which are all, all of them are who? Who are they? Tubal, Misha, Javan, who is that? I was asked that question earlier. <laughs> Here's the answer. All of them are the sons of Japheth. Who are the sons of Japheth now? Who are the Khazars? Hmm. Javan, Tubal, and Meshach, they are thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. They of the house of Torgarma traded their fares in thy fares with horses, horsemen, mules. The men of Dadan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They bought thee for a present horns of ivory and ebony 
Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the wares of thy making. They occupied the fairs with emeralds, purple, embroidered work, and fine linen and coral. We're talking about all the final, all the finery, all of the finery. See, there's not going to be no middle, baby. The middle is going to be gone. I'm taking back a little bit from this, but the middle going to be gone. And it's going to be the upper and the pole broke. The people who are the useful idiots that are being placed in these cities right now are only there to scare out the inhabitants, only there to ravage the inhabitants, only there to move them on out of the way. And then they're going to have something for them too. They're going to have, this, this is not the first time this has been done. And I hate to say this for people who may get offended, but you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right if you get offended. It's the same exact way. They had that movie. I think it was, um, it wasn't us. It was another movie. Them, I think. Well, you show Compton back in the day where the first black family moved in the land. I hate to say it like this, but I can only use, because, hey, they use the same exact tactics. I'm sorry. They use the same tactics. It's not me. I promise. I promise. When they moved the first black folk in the families, in those communities, they knew that they had to break up the communities. So they had to make them one. Do you understand? Do you really get it? They had to make the communities one and allow them to deal with the arguments and the fights after they put the first one in there. From redlining that area, putting them in anyway, making them pay more money, even than the counterparts that were Anglo that lived there at that time. Do you see what I'm trying to tell you? Do you see the juxtaposition? I hope that you do and don't take it all personal and don't get off on, the, oh, she said she against the black folk. I ain't against nobody unless you against my creator and then it's me and you, right? We done with each other, right? Okay. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the fact that this is not the first time that this has happened. You know, elephants are afraid of mice. They bring in the mice to run off the elephants, but they brought in the mice to run off the elephants a long time ago, and they're bringing in big mice now to run off the new elephant. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay. All right. I'm glad you do. So um, basically, while we're looking at all of the all of the biblical passages, you can go with these for yourself. I'm going to put this down below on the notes, and those are going to be able for those who want to use them. You can. For those who do not, that's fine too. But I again have to bring it to you. Thy roarers, here's the destruction. Thy roarers have brought thee into great waters. In the east, the east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. This is all dealing with maritime. Please get that piece. Everything is dealing with maritime. Remember the video that we did where Netanyahu was standing up saying, we'll have a maritime corridor that'll take us straight from here all the way to the west, all the way into Asia. This is that. It looks like it's a bad situation, but it was all planned. Look at the coordinates. Now, Betsy Ross, Betsy Ross, let me show you guys something. Okay. I don't even want to go into this. I think I want to make this another video because it's just too much information for anybody. And I don't want to over overwhelm you guys with some information, but I have some information that shows that originally this particular bridge was over a body of water. Let me just get it for you. Y'all ain't crazy people. You guys are very smart. You're brilliant. So it's not going to harm you. I know you guys are ready for this. So let me go on ahead and get it. Let me just get this. I have something that's dealing specifically with Betsy Ross. And again, we're using all the names. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. I'm just going to say it because it's not going to be, I'm too excited for me to try to go through each and every one of these, but let me say this to you. And this will be my commentary piece. If you look at all the players that deal with this particular area, from the very beginning, from Francis Scott Key to who he was representing as an attorney. <clears throat> and I have to say it like this, you guys, because I'm too excited to go through each one of these. You guys, I'll put these down below in the description. I promise I will. I'll put them all together on this uh, notepad and then I'll put them together. And then I want you guys to do your own research because I'm too excited for me to actually go through each one of these and read them. I've got at least 12 tabs open. So let me just give you my my synopsis. This particular body of water has some significance in that not only is it Francis Scott Key 
Bridge. It's also a major thoroughfare. It also started out back when they could only get one ship, but it also has names that are significant, like Betsy Ross. Remember, we're talking about the foundation being uh, taken over. We're talking about the infrastructure being shaken and shaken and changed, okay? Betsy Ross, when you look this up with the notes that I'm going to leave you, you'll see Betsy Ross, a significant name. You'll also see Hamilton. You'll also uh, find out that um, if you trace who it was, that Mr. Francis Scott Key was defending, it was about money. And the money was, let's use, for example, a piece of this. The monies were not coming from the Rothschilds because Lincoln said, it's okay, we'll print our own, we'll do our own, we'll make our own. Isn't it amazing that this whole entire thing is dealing with money? Now, who was used at that particular time dealing with the money back then? Who was he uh, having, who, who, who did Hamilton have a duel with and why? What was the duel all about? Who wanted to use the money here? Who always funds both sides of the war? Who always funds, I'm asking y'all the questions, who always funds both sides of war? Who would stand to get upset if one cat says, it's okay, we don't need your money, we're going to print our own. So Lincoln said, it's okay, we good, we don't need it, we're all right. So they called one dude a traitor when he was actually not the traitor. I'm talking about the whole Hamilton situation. I'm talking about all that money that was being, that would have been uh, made during that particular time and how much somebody stood to lose if they weren't the ones that the money was coming from. I hope I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, y'all got it. Y'all got it. Mm -hmm, I'm seeing everybody in here. Absolutely right. I'm looking at all of y'all. You're absolutely right. I want you guys to take a look at the way that this was hit. Take a look at the way that this area was hit. So I put the video up here. Oh, so it's not here anymore? Huh. That's impossible. It's okay. I know where I put it. I know where I made it. So let me give it to you guys. So I want you guys to look at that. I want you to look at why they may have been upset back then and who it was that really killed who for what. Why was Hamilton's name even a part of this? And why is Hamilton even in the movie that I was referencing, Leave the World Behind? There are significant pieces that have something to do with that as well. Here's the video that I wanna show you guys. It is not published, but I had to put it here on YouTube. I hope I still kept it. No, it's not on the studio. Let's go back. And you guys can watch it for yourselves. Content, it's not on headlines. It's on the Lockhart perspective right here. Okay, I want you guys to look at this. Look at very closely as this bridge is hit. Look at it very closely. It's private. Let me go there on YouTube. Pause it. All right, you guys, I'm going to share this with you. All right. You see the way it was hit? Does that not look intentional? Not that it is. That's a main support beam. Now look at the vehicles. Let's look at that again. It's only 45 seconds. Let's look at it again. It's 47 seconds. Let's watch that again. Right there at the support beam. How's that an accident, dude? How do you got two mates on there that are leading this and you hit it like that? 
Huh. Huh. Go figure. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So a lot of the uh, information that you're going to see, you're going to, uh, that'll be down below in the description. You're going to look at Aaron Burr. You'll be looking at Hamilton. You will find out what was going on, why nobody wanted the Rothschilds money, who did what, and how significant that is to the whole entire breaking of this current infrastructure. Every single inch of it has something to do with it. Is nothing that's not, even from, you know, the greenbacks, the money that was the greenback, and why was that significant? All of this is telling you metaphorically that this is the collapse. That's what this is. It's not, it's not a bunch of other stuff that I can say about it. It's not a whole bunch of other things because you guys already know the deal, but that's what this is. There are so many container ships that are not going to be able to get through there right now, and we will see the fallout from this. We are definitely going to see the fallout without a doubt. Now, this river, remember I told you guys, and I'm going to give you this little bitty uh, breadcrumb, and I want you guys to look at this. Okay, right about here. Everything's significant, even down to how many kilometers the the whole, <laughs> how, how the kilometers, how the distance of the of, of that river that it was going over. And I think it's Patapsco, Patapsco, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, Patapsco, the river. Uh, and the history of that river is very significant, very significant. Um, I believe that's where you're going to see Betsy Ross's name come in. If not there, I know it's going to be the other ship that the other area that we saw that was hit. It was Betsy Ross that was hit back in June of 2023, June 11, 2023, when they were, when they changed up, see what they did is they always got a part one and a part two. If this don't work, then this gonna work. So when they hit that part of Virginia, when they hit that part last year, that was going in through Pennsylvania, I think it was all that stuff that we just got to looking at, you guys correct me, but nonetheless, the reason why they had to do this is because they were probably gonna do this anyway, but they pitched a fit last year. And they're probably going to pitch a fit this year if there's anybody who cares. Probably, probably not. And what do I mean by that? I'm saying they're going to piss a fit because they do not want that area to be blocked off. But this, I don't think they're going to be able to bring this together like they did that highway last year. I don't think so. I think we've covered everything as far as my notes are concerned. However, here's what I'm going to do. The next several stories, which ironically are stories that I was already freaking working on. <laughs> Already freaking working on all the way down to that entire mall in New York that's going to be shut down that is right there dealing with their MTA, dealing with their transportation. That big old mall, that's all be for commerce. Every inch of that. They're saying they're closing it down because they're being uh, people are breaking in and taking stuff and smashing and grabbing every inch of that. So what we're going to do is every one of the videos that I'm going to do that's going to follow up with this, I'm going to tag it. And um, you guys give me a name which you want me to tag it with because I can't even think right now. I don't even know what to tag it with. Um, maybe Tyre, T-Y-R-E. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll put, put that somewhere in description so you know that it goes with this. Because see, every single thing, one brick laid upon the other brick all goes together. If you know, you know. If you can see it, you can see it. So I think maybe that's what we'll do. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Um, because I've got so many stories right now, you guys, that are just, it's amazing that this happened today. It is amazing that this happened today. Because if you could just see the stories, I hope that's not thunder. Well, I mean, if it's thunder, that's fine. But what I just heard was like a shaking of the house. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Okay. You guys, I'm not going to belabor the time. It's we're already here. Been at, We've been here an hour and there's so much that I could have said that I just don't even know where to start. This is amazing. Um, what I sent was a longer video starting before the crash. Oh, hey, Don Oz, you sent a video. Okay, baby, let me go over here and see it. I don't want to 
Let me make sure I show it. Okay. Thank you for that, Precious. Let me scroll down. I have to open up my business email to get it. Thank you guys for sending in videos and such. Okay. You got to see this first. Good day. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Oh, there's an attachment. All right. Let's open it. Open this. Oh, I have to download it first. Okay. Oh, I'll be interceding for you. Mm. Okay, so hold on. Let me go and look at this. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me see how to show this. Hold on. Maybe if I show it smaller. Thank you for this. This is good. Thanks. Um, hmm. If I close this down, will I be able to show it? No. I don't know how to show these from here unless I download it and then start it from there. Hold on, baby. Thank you for sending this again. Hold on. Don't go nowhere. I'm going to show it because you sent it, and I really appreciate that. Okay. And it does show it. You're absolutely right. It is showing it from before then. Whoa. Okay. Here you guys, let me, I don't know how to show this without showing my email. I don't want to show it with you. Oh, here, I'll scroll it all the way up. No, I can't scroll it all the way up. If I make this smaller, maybe I can do it. I don't want to show your personal information and I don't know how to show it well, wait a minute. Don't confess that. You can figure this out. There. Duh. Okay. Let me pause this so we can see the video that she just sent. Present this. Present a window is what I'll need to do. Share. Okay, I don't know if you guys are going to see it dual or single, but let me start it. Can you guys see that? Oz, Oz, can you see this? Hey, King BJ. It's running, but I don't know if you all can see it. Do you see where she was showing us that it was beforehand? Let me go back. Look at this. Remember what I showed, just showed hitting it. Look at where it's starting from. That's like they meant to do it in my impression. No lights on the ship, Teresa. Look at those four cars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where are the lights? That's bananas, right? That is bananas. Yes, it did, Oz. That's amazing. This, I, I, you guys, I want to look at it again because we'll look at it and see something different this time. No lights. Absolutely none right into the main support beam. Mm. 978 feet takes a while to correct. That's from Robert. That is amazing. Look at the cars that are going by just in time. Woo! Mm. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. 
So there we are. There we are. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's thank you, Oz, for sending that. Thank you. That is more, that is so that is so devastating. Absolutely, Starfire. That is devastating. I was beyond words for a moment, as loquacious as I am, but thank you for that, Starfire. Okay, let's see. Uh, Vine Dressers Branch, hello. I saw a report that the captain could control the ship. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if any of you guys have any information that you want to share or send, please do, because my blood is running so, and this story has got me into such an exciting place. There was so much that I would have liked to have gone in slowly. But what I will do is, as I begin to put some of the other stories together that I already have, uh, and I tag them, you guys will be able to see it. Hold on, I have a message. Oh, send you a link. Hold on, let me send you the link. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because there are some... Um... Stop sharing this. Hold on a second. All right. There are so many other pieces, you guys, that we would have to look at because to me, none of this stuff stands by itself because let, let's keep our minds in, in this pattern. Um, let's keep our minds in this pattern. Keep your mind in the pattern that says that there is a great um, takeover. That, this, that there is a great takeover because this is that, whether we want to uh, accept it. However, a lot of you guys that are that follow me, you already know what this is. The only thing is, is how do you leave the world behind? That's the only question. How do you leave it behind? How do you leave this place behind? Let me give um, you guys the opportunity to see some of the comments that you all have put here. You guys come in and put um, uh, comments and I need to be able to make sure that they're seen, okay? So let's see here. All right, Rico5377 says, order out of chaos. Carrie Richardson's love the biblical view. Uh, Allen Girls, some Boston ports are owned by China and mayor of Boston is Chinese, wow. Um, is it Raven, Ravenator? I wouldn't believe too much from Giver or the governor, I believe you mean. Governor Moore, yes. Okay, just recheck the Uber app and, he, and the restaurant is literally straight across from the Francis Key Bridge. This is such a bummer. There's a lot of good Mexican spots around us that they had, um, that had that fire, okay? Thank you for that. The US Corporation, absolutely. Just sent you an accident video. Thank you for that video. You guys rock. Thank you. Yes, absolutely, Carrie. Yep, Greenleaf, you're spot on. You're spot on. Good afternoon, Felicia Chatter. <laughs> Zeb, hey. Um, yeah, I thought the same thing, but when you ask yourself, why is it international? International because it's all a part of one because it's a part of oneness, you know? If any of you guys want to come up, let me know. Um, hey, brother. Hey. Let me put on my headphones. How you doing? I'm glad to have you here because, you know, biblically there's a lot of stuff that, that's significant here. And it's so funny sometimes you find people who don't want to deal with the biblical piece. Although I know our chats that we have here, they want to see the biblical significance because a lot of times people have already seen it before we ever bring it up. And it's generally going to be a confirmation to what they've seen. Do you agree to that? Yeah, you hit it on the head with Ezekiel 26 and Ezekiel 27 in reference to Revelation 18, in reference to the maritime mm -hmm. industry being the industry that falls. And um, uh, as far as the biblical prophecy is concerned, that collapse is what brings on the quote unquote uh, biblical end times, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, you hit it on the head when you were talking about the city of Tyre and all of the port cities of the ancient world in relation to the modern day port cities. It's um, 
it's it's actually spot on and it's um it's very telling and it's very eye opening and if you have your eyes already open it's it's time to wait it's time to stand up <laughs> like this is this is the time and if it's not the time we're definitely at the prep precipice of the time mm -hmm. um uh these are uh alarms that are sounding and ringing um blaring even to let to let us know or even okay i'll i'll, I'll go here to let certain elites know that um you know these are uh stages or phases that we're about to cross thresholds um into you know uh going into the next phase the next stage and uh it's it's it, it's evident it's 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 clearly evident and if and if you don't understand the evidence the body of evidence that you're looking at if you just pay attention and start deciphering just picking apart things like i i, I see you doing it becomes very apparent and i quote when you follow the money. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but, uh, oh, no, no, go, go ahead, please. No, please. I was just saying it's absolutely important to follow the money because I think, you know, every single bit of this is all about mammon. Every, every inch of it is nothing that's done that doesn't gain, that doesn't bring anyone any financial gain that they're doing. You know what I'm saying? It's not like they're just doing it because they want to. It's all because of the money and it's all because of, you know, the power that, that the money brings them. And, and it's, and it's definitely a plan. You know, the mall that I was talking about was built 10 years ago and now it's closing down. And the funny thing is, is that that particular mall in New York, let me show you guys the mall in New York. Hold on. The mall in New York that is closing down right now was put up 10 years ago and now they're being sued because the mall company says we're out of here. Um, let me show it to you guys. Yeah. The MTA <laughs> is selling is, is suing the mall giant Westfield after the company notified them, it intends to end its lease and cease all operations at the Fulton center. Now, prior to this happening, I had pulled together some videos dealing with the Fulton center. Anytime you look at a mall, you already know that malls are going to bring in commerce and that's something very important. But this mall was put in the area, the mall was put in the area so, solely to make the people believe that this is something that they were going to give them, that this was going to be for the people. It was going to bring jobs. It was going to bring opportunity. It was going to bring all this stuff in. But bingo, bango, let's look at it. Here's the introduction of it. And I'm going to show you what they sold them as the bill of goods. This was the bill of goods that they sold them back during that time. Okay. This was from the, listen, this was from the transportation authority there in New York. So let me give it to you guys and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. When I say, as, as Ronnie just got through mentioning the following of the money, because it's easy to give you 10 years to have something where you can go in and buy yourself some outfits and take your family to a nice movie or to a nice meal. For 10 years, you're going to think this was all for you because that's what they used your tax dollars to do. But in essence, that ain't what this was about at all. Here it is. They are about to close it down. So let me show you here. Is this a video? Is this a video? That's it right there. There we go. Can you guys see it over there? I think you can. What I remember the most about this project, in addition to the challenges of completing it, is the unique architecture and the interplay between architecture and art that gives this location its special meanings, uh, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the fact that on 9-11, uh, we suffered incredible destruction and, and now uh, the revival of this thing gives me great pleasure to see it.
already know the music was already going to have me flagged for this, so that's okay. But I do want to show you another portion of this mall shortly after. Okay, let me take you here. Yeah, I mean, a beautiful idea, right? It was a wonderful idea to have this. It was great. Now, here is the coming soon. We already saw the other piece, so that's enough of the coming soon. Here it is right here, where the retail, retail giant- complex in Manhattan wants out of its lease. give this to you for the news. We'll take it to YouTube so you guys can see it. Let me pause it here. And I'll share that with you guys, because this is my point. I just want to, to drive the point home that everything is dealing with money and how they frame the things you currently have to show you that here, we're doing this for you. Once this mall is closed, baby, it's on and popping. That's all I want you to understand is it will be on and popping. Here you go. Retail complex in Manhattan wants out of its lease, blaming rampant crime in New York City. The Fulton Transit Center integrated five subway stations serving nine lines when it opened in 2014. Real estate company Westfield has managed and operated the property since then, but with 10 years still on their lease. Notice the water around this map, if you will. We got to look at it from where we're coming from. All right. Notice the water. Notice the water, baby. Maritime, notice it. And Transit Center integrated five subway stations serving nine lines when it opened in 2014. Real estate company Westfield has managed and operated the property since then, but with 10 years still on their lease, they say they're concerned about public safety and security. But the MTA is letting them not letting them back out of the lease without a legal fight. Eyewitness News reporter Anthony Carlo live in Lower Manhattan with the details. Anthony. Well, David, I spoke to some subway riders and people who work here at the Fulton Center. They tell me rampant homelessness is of greatest concern to them. One worker who works in a coffee shop here tells me at one time she had to practically hide a woman out inside her store to prevent her from being stalked and harassed. And as you mentioned, a number of quality life concerns here at the Fulton Transit Center have caused its retail management company to break its lease with the MTA. Westfield, according to filings in federal court, wants out only 10 years into its 20-year agreement. The MTA is now suing the retail management company for breaking that lease, but Westfield says the Transportation Authority is not properly maintaining public safety at the transit hub. The mall giant has told the MTA multiple tenants have left, citing break-ins, theft, vandalism, harassment, and assault. Of course, all of this comes as the National Guard and state police, have we, as we've been reporting, have been deployed across the subway system to make riders feel safe after a spate of high-profile transit crimes. Retail theft is up more than 4% in New York City so far this year. And though one coffee shop worker at the Fulton Center says theft isn't really what she's most concerned about, there are other pressing safety issues. Some subway riders say they actually try to avoid taking the train here altogether because of it. The real problem is homelessness here. That will you could just look out the window and just see people just more like roaming around um they're probably lessened because of the you know it's getting nicer outside but during the winter months it's a lot it's always scary you know um as, as, as a girl i always go by myself everywhere and um i always had to know be like pay attention i never like feel safe to walk just like you know in this street it was supposed to be safe for us now, the MTA issued this comment about its lawsuit against Westfield saying, quote, while we are unable to comment on specific pending litigation, we have full confidence in the NYPD, which has surged officers into the subway to ensure safety across the transit system, including at the Fulton Center. Now, we have reached out to Westfield to get a comment from them on this story. That coffee shop worker you heard from, she says she's been here three months. She has seen a police presence and a security guard presence in the time she's been here. We see some security officers and cops here today. That worker tells me she feels the kiosk workers are most exposed to theft because they are inside the center with really no other protection to keep them safe. Okay, so now we saw that. I also want to bring up the next thing that. Um, that we're looking at. And it's not that. It's definitely not that. I don't want to look at him. Um, and by him, I mean the whole Diddy thing. Because look, <clears throat> Diddy does have something to do with this. Because if you look, you've got some great and powerful people running out, right? 
running out and going elsewhere. This cat's place was um, was uh, taken over uh, yesterday when they went in. The Homeland Security went in uh, and and got a hold of three of his properties, two that we definitely know of, and one that I heard was a rumor. And I have not been able to verify that only because I've been pulling these pieces together today, um, and pur purposefully waited to do the Diddy story until this evening after sundown, uh, because I knew that there'd be more information. But nonetheless, he does have a little bit to show because see great and powerful people that have been used as pawns as um, the useful idiots, as it were, to do the things that they thought that they could do against others. These individuals definitely have a role. They definitely have a place. It's the large people, the big folks who think that they are going to get over and they're not. Even when they go underground, I believe there's going to be something great and catastrophic underground and bring them out and the people on top will be all right. But nonetheless, here are um, here is something that Ronnie sent to me because we have been talking prior to this about this. This was what I found so striking. Ronnie, Ronnie. <laughs> and remember, you guys, I mentioned the bill just came back last week, uh, Friday, I believe it was. The bill uh, came back Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the so the bill came back Friday for a total of a whopping one point two trillion dollars, uh, mm -hmm. for for uh you know advancement of the U.S. infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, including highways, roads, and bridges. Um, and so so to me, it's just uh, ironic. I'll say ironic. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just ironic that this bill just came back on Friday. Three and a half days later, Monday Monday morning, you know, you know Monday night, Tuesday morning, this happens to a very uh, uh, um, pro a, a major significant. corridor, significant mm -hmm. corridor mm -hmm. um, of a bridge. Uh, mind you, the Francis Scott Key. Hmm. It so. says President Joe Biden signed the $1.2 trillion Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act into law on November 15th over the next few years. Right. Yeah, but but we know that it was obviously pushed through. We saw it on Friday. Everybody right. here saw it Friday. <clears throat> as far as, you know, of course, we know that there's a matriculation period. First it goes here, then it goes here, then it goes here, and then bingo, bingo, there you go. All righty. Uh, in November, over the next few years, states uh, states will get multi-billion dollar windfall investments in physical infrastructure to build roads, bridges, and uh, public transit, clean water and wastewater systems, electric vehicle charging networks, and high-speed internet through investors, though investors, pardon me, can work with a financial advisor to capitalize on these dynamics in their portfolios. Absolutely. States themselves will get varying amounts of that cash influx. Let's break down how much money your state could get from Congress. Now, we know that it will get from Congress, okay? Barring anything that they may have cut apart. But anyway, well, the look. White House, mm -hmm, go, go. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I was just saying, scroll down to Maryland. Okay, let's scroll down. Let's just cut to the scroll, tape. Scroll, scroll down to Maryland. Scroll Absolutely. down to Maryland. Let's go to Maryland. Um, and, and and check out what they what they what they are what they are bringing to the table. <laughs> um, so when you when you pull up Mar Maryland, they are allotted seven point four. I mean, pretty just much. roughly, pretty much. Yeah, it is because seven point four billion dollars. And and listen to this: four hundred and nine million of it is for bridge replacement and repairs. <clears throat> so and just in the nick of time. <laughs> I mean, so I, it's just, it's just fast. It's just, it's ironic. Yeah, I'll leave it, it at that. Ironic? It's, it's, it's ironic. Isn't it ironic? Just, a, yep. just a little, you know. So it says the, uh, the state could expect to get four point one billion dollars in highway aid, four hundred and nine million for bridge replacement and repairs, and one point seven million over five years to improve the public transportation, sixty three million over five years to expand their electric vehicle charging networks, and one hundred million dollars in broadband infrastructure investments is seven point nine million dollars over five years to protect against wildfires, fifteen point nine million to protect against cyber attacks. 844 million over five years to improve water infrastructure and 158 million over five years for airport development. Now, 
The um, funny thing is, okay, let's say, for example, there are a whole bunch of bridges. <laughs> you know, burn all of them. Okay. No, yeah. We get that one bridge, I'm on my money first. Not to say that they had anything to do with this, of course. I'm just saying. It, it, you know, we'll, we'll get the first allotment. Not only was it done now, we're ready to go ahead and rebuild. My question is, and I, and I, you know, I really want to see exactly when we will expect the United States part in the maritime, uh, the maritime bridge that's being done for Israel, because there is evidence that shows, and I've, I pulled this, all this up. There's evidence that shows that America will, the United States, I should say, uh, the United States is in partnership with this building of the bridge, uh, of this maritime bridge. However, it was secret for a minute, so much so that there are some reports from different uh, news articles that show that it was a secretive partnership, that the United States, did, uh, to everybody from the front, didn't even have any idea that the United States had a part of this. But as you read through some of them, it'll say the secret relationship between the United States and Israel to build XYZ. So... All of these things, again, if you follow the money, ain't nobody doing nothing for nothing. Nobody's going to give up, you know, a uh, partnership with anybody for nothing. And the only reason why we're seeing now somebody say, well, uh, shame on them for having this many people harmed over there is because we know what time it is. It's an election year. And the same thing that happened in, with the election year mindset in the state of Georgia you know, dealing with this whole entire kangaroo court thing that's going on with the former president. Again, not necessarily, and I don't necessarily agree with this cat, but what I'm saying is you can see a kangaroo when you see a kangaroo. If you know a kangaroo when you see it, you ain't got to be on either side, okay? All you got to do is get your box of popcorn and sit there and watch it because that's what exactly, exactly what it is. But we even said in that situation, because if you follow the money, you know what's up, that nothing would become of it. I would not be shocked if the judge said, well, just going ahead and do X, Y, Z, because it's an election year, not just for him, but several others. So it's all about protecting the money. It's all about, here goes some money. It's all about, let me get my money first, which if we're looking at this situation, it could very well be, let me get my money first. Oh, you guys already know you approved it. So let me go ahead. Let us go ahead and get our money first. And all of the companies that stand to gain are That's ex exactly all of the companies that stand to gain is unbelievable. Let's look at that. That's um, what it is. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's so, so you have to understand we're, we're as, as Americans or as America is concerned, we are operating on an what 80 plus year um, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like the, the infrastructure was, was, put in place after world war two, mm -hmm. like all the roads, all, all the mm -hmm. highways, all the, you know, uh, all the, um, uh, uh, electrical, uh, grids, things like that. Man, it's, it's almost a hundred years old. Mm -hmm. So like, and then we have, we have these, uh, up and coming, uh, Arab States that are mm. light years ahead of us. They have technology, they have, they have all the fiber optics, like, um, they're all underground, you know what I mean? Like, um, yes. Uh, so everything's solar, everything's uh, it's just it's just high tech in comparison to our cave uh, era, uh, you know, uh, electrical grid. And um, we we're long overdue for. Get, you know, propping it up, propping it back up, if you mm -hmm. will. And mm -hmm. um, but so what I'm saying is like all of these companies that are in play, like who's at the front of the line? Hmm. Who's at the front of the line? Follow the money. <clears throat> well, let's take a look at this. Okay. So if the entire Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore were to collapse, here are some of the things. So you've got construction company and engineering firms, companies involving in the emergency response, the recovery, and the reconstruction efforts could see or would see a surge in demand for their services. And this could lead to an increased stock prices for those firms. Now, if you remember a few years ago, four years ago, when we first had the entire uh, shutdown of the United States and all the different you know, areas of the world, there were certain areas that hurt because of the shutdown. And the main thing was home builders were not able to get all of the items that they needed to build the homes because a lot of those companies went down and a lot of the home builders ended up having to charge more for the homes because the parts and the items that they needed to build the homes, the price increased, they said. 
So now transportation and logistic companies, shipping and transportation companies that rely on the bridge for transport for transporting goods would face significant disruptions and potentially incur higher costs for alternative routes. This could lead to decrease to discrete to decreased stock prices for these companies in the short term. It Absolutely. could also, yeah. <clears throat> so let's so, go on. So, go so we're looking at, we're looking at, we're looking at uh, the downfall or the potential spiral uh, even of uh, mom and pop. Mm, but absolutely. but the skyrocket mm -hmm. in corp in corporate Amer in corporation. Absolutely. The infrastructure and material companies that provide the materials for building and repairing the bridges, such as the steel and the concrete manufacturers, would likely benefit from increased demand. Now the question is who owns those companies? <laughs> okay, who are the major players in those companies? This could also result in higher stock prices for these companies. My question is, who knew and how much has somebody invested just recently in any of these companies? That takes, a, you, you just want to take a look at it. Now, the tourism and the hospitality companies, you're going to see if this, obviously because of the collapse of this bridge, it could have significantly imp significant impact on the tourism to the area, which is going to obviously, you know, have lower stock prices for some of those companies that are in the hospitality sector because people aren't going to be coming in and out. The local businesses, to your point, Ronnie, some of the companies that are located near that bridge that rely on it for customer traffic, which is the middle cat, not the big cat, because the big cats, they don't have an issue coming back in to take care of all of the construction workers that's going to be needing to come in and out. They don't have a problem with any of that. But the middleman is not going to be able to deal with this for too long, especially if they were dealing with traffic coming in and out of that area. That's exactly. going to potentially, uh, most of those companies that are mom and pop are not necessarily open to the public. So these aren't open stock companies, but it would definitely prevent them <clears throat> from making the revenue that they are generally, right. you know, used to having to keep their livelihood afloat. Now, and not to, and not to go, mention go. not not to mention the uh, the uh, cargo channel that stopped up. Oh my goodness! Oh my! This is like <clears throat> this is like nine eleven and and COVID all wrapped into one. So so there are um, at least eight nine ten. Uh, cargo vessels that are inside of the Baltimore port that can't get out and will remain there for an unforeseen amount of time. And those they, goods aren't coming off of that ship, right? Off of those vessels, right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. So all the goods oh, no. that are there. Well, are well all, all the there? goods that were going to come off are being taken off or have already been taken off. And all of the ones that have been loaded to be exported out are just sitting. So this the, the, this far reaches just the this community because uh, where is it going? Um, I think it was going to Sri Lanka. Yeah. So yeah. So, Sri Lanka so, and a couple of other places. So the um, the economy over there is about to be slumped for a couple of weeks, and when it's slumped for a couple of weeks, that it, uh, equivocates on a global scale months, <laughs> months, and then the resounding impact uh, financially you know, mm -hmm. uh, could be years, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on how much and how, how it, it reverberates, it reverberates. It reverberates. It does. It's like a rippling effect. The whole entire thing is this big rippling effect. And, 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 and I do have to point out again, that time and time again, we've seen issues take place with bridges and with highways and as a signal that was coming from the time that we first started seeing it all the way up to now, it's now coming right to your door. It's like mm -hmm. right at your door because a lot of these companies that utilize this stuff, you know, I, I, I don't believe that a lot of the stuff, unless they're going to use it as a tax write-off. I don't believe that a lot of, no, I'm not even going to go there right now. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave, <laughs> well, leave that, I'm going to leave that I, right I mean, there. I mean, on another side, I mean, on, a, on another tangent, like, uh, Thanks to, you know, the trusty big brother Fed and uh, uh, the entire federal government and, you know, um, Biden's excellent timing in implementing this bill back in November. So it is uh, in play now. Like we man, the, the, the saviors are here. 
Absolutely. 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 This is, this is that in, in, you know, personified it's, it's, it's definitely the way that we always know about the Hegelian dialectic. You know, you cause the problem and you, po you pose the problem, you cause the problem. And here, I got a solution for you. Here you go. Uh, <laughs> except the solution, obviously, in this case, was done, you know, uh, was done long ago. As I showed with the 10 years on this, on this particular mall being there. Beautiful mall, by the way, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say that that was sort of state of the art? Oh, that was top notch. That was top notch. Yeah, it was top notch. And so these are the types of things I want everybody to look at going forward. But the biblical indication that we read today was significant. And as long as you understand that it all ties in together, right, right. You, you won't go wrong. What do you think that, about that? Well, that's why I'm speaking on the specific aspects that I am, because you hit it on the head as well, once again. Um, this is all mammon. This Absolutely. is all mammon. Absolutely. That's, so that's why I'm harping on the money. Well, of course, you know, uh, you should always follow the money. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, in relation to the end time prophetic and, you know, um, I, I'll even go dark on you real quick. Doomsday prophecies oh, and yeah. you know, things of that nature. Like it all is based on mammon specifically. Oh, yeah. Maritime, specifically yeah. the maritime industry. Please go back and scrutinize the text um, um, in regards to Revelation 18 when it's when it's um, giving you the litany of uh, goods that it, that's the global trade. That is absolutely mm -hmm. the maritime industry. That is absolutely the uh, the global trading industry, the imports and ex exports. And uh, like I said, they got that playbook right out of Ezekiel 24. Uh, 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 26 me, and 27. And 27. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And he's telling you the same thing. And that is the call of for a lamentation unto Tyre. The city mm -hmm. of Tyre. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, um, I, here I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up. I'm gonna pull I'm, up. Okay, well, I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up a map so we can see exactly what we're oh, talking. Oh yeah, about. give me the map. All give right, me I'll, the be, map. I'll be right back. I'll be right. Yeah, back. yeah. You know, you guys, like we shared, uh, we always want to use the biblical context to look at exactly what's going on because to me, that's like our compass, as it were. It shows us that we're headed in the right direction. It shows us that when you're thinking of something by yourself and you don't have anybody else to bounce something off of that you're in the right direction. When you get an idea and you're like, wait a minute, is that, I don't know. No, you're in the right direction. Don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt yourself at all. Because generally when you get that thought, that's for your own uh, security, your own safety. That's for you to understand exactly what's up. Whenever you see something like that, whenever you're getting those ideas, could it be that passage? It most assuredly is that passage. It most assuredly is. So here you see what we read earlier, Ezekiel 26 and Ezekiel 27. I want you guys to make sure that you go there because it says in verse 17 of 26, Ezekiel, and they will take up lamentations for you and say to you, how you have perished, O oh, one inhabited by seafaring men, a renowned city. Everything deals with port cities because that's commerce. That's commerce. And when you consider the verse that we're talking about in Revelation 18, they're talking about they could see it from afar off. And in that movie, which is the backdrop of where you see us right here, this backdrop, that backdrop is from that movie, Leave the World Behind. When those two ships, the ship that we just got through seeing this morning and the ship in Leave the World Behind, if you juxtapose those ships together, let me see if I do an overlay, if you're able to see what I'm saying. Let me see if I do an overlay Will it take me off the air or will it let you guys see it? Hold on. Here is the overlay. That's the background. Here is the overlay. So you guys can see what I'm referring to. Right. Overlay, overlay. Right there. You see that? The first one was the white lion. And it had 1619 was one of the scanners on this movie. One of the scanners on the movie was 1619. Let me see if you guys can still hear me. Mods, can you still hear me? Let me know if I'm still up. Let me know if I'm still up, if you can still hear me with this overlay on. But the movie 
showed a scanner in the movie and it had 1619 on it. And it was the White Lion, which is a Chinese owned ship, Chinese owned fleet, I would imagine. Uh, you can hear me five by five blessings. Um, good, good, Cindy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leslie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Cindy. So this in this favor, they favor. But if you haven't watched that movie, I suggest you go watch it. For those of you who, like myself, had gotten rid of your Netflix, if you got it free with your cell phone bill, watch the movie. Because this overlay right here and what you see on the left, the first side that you see on the left is the container ship that hit the bridge this morning. What you see on the right is from the movie, Leave the World Behind. This particular ship in that movie went all the way up to that sand and sat there. And it just so happens to be the white lion. And it just so happens to be the white lion. And the 1619 was the actual time frame that they, the United States, brought in some of their first slaves that came in, I believe, through Virginia. I could be wrong, but I believe it was through Virginia. Because as New you Ham guys. New Hampton, yeah, Virginia, uh, Hampton. Mm -hmm. Fort Comfort. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. was, uh, and the ship was the white lion. Mm -hmm. The ship was the white lion. And this is the ship white lion in this movie. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so anyway, that is exactly what is up with that and how we're looking at the world and how we're looking at what, what is that? What, what do they call it? The, uh, life imitating art or, or, you know, the imitation of life and art or between the two, if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> so nonetheless, that's exactly what this is. This is exactly what they're telling you when they said, when, when Barack Obama and his wife, as executive producers of the movie, or of, yes, of that movie, Leave the World Behind, did that, this cat is brilliant in that he does nothing by accident. He doesn't waste his time and do anything. And if That's you guys right. don't understand the form of why I say brilliant, you know, there are a lot of diabolical minds out there that are brilliant. You got a lot of folks out there that are brilliant. So please understand what I'm saying. This man does not waste his time and do something with any of his change, none of his coins, if it didn't have any significance. And if you have not seen that movie for whatever the reason, watch it. Just watch it. Right. Going every frame, on. every frame has a meaning. Every line has a meaning. Every oh, man. still has a meaning. Has in the beginning of that meaning. movie. Absolutely. The very beginning of that movie. Had so pull up that map. Pull up that map real quick. Okay, you put it in the in the back chat. Yes, oh, I see it. Okay, there we go. Yes, ma'am. So when you when, when you look at this map, well, let pull me pull it. it up as well. Okay, our, when you look up the okay. map. Okay, <laughs> well, let oh, me pull it up. Here's the map. Okay, so 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 when you, you know. when you look up that map, um, I have I have it pinned. I have it pinned. Oh, did it not pull up the exact one? Mm -mm. Which one is it? You pinned it. It didn't give us the pinned it. Um, just 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 pull up Israel in general. Haifa, uh, Hi, or is yeah. you said Israel Haifa? Yeah. yeah, just pull pull up any one of those. Okay. Let me see. Um, let's do this one. That one. I don't know. Let's look. Okay, <laughs> great. So um, so when you you see you see Haifa. Yeah, I see it right here. Okay, so can you can you uh, scroll up a little bit? You mean make it north? bigger? Like, like well, I mean, uh, zoom like out just, just a tinge, and then go up north, and then Is, show show north. Can you see this? Yes. Go go uh, go north. You got the wrong person trying to okay. fumble around okay. with a man. Well, well, can I can I? Uh, yeah, I'll give you control. <clears throat> Let me give you control. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I don't know how to give you control. You have to request control, I think. If you request control, I can give you control. Or maybe I can just try to figure out how to do north. Let me see how to do north. Okay. View the image. There you go. No. That no. ain't it either. Well, when you look at how, when you look at, uh, like that? Yeah, that's the third major city in 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 Israel. Is Huge this, city, is major city. It? No, but that's okay. Uh, um, that's that's fine though. Uh, right there, 
that is the third major city in in uh in Israel that is one of the premier that is if not the premier one of the more major port cities mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in Israel right above that is the ancient city of Tyre mm, which is why you wanted me to go north if I could Right above that, if you just pull up Israel, just take Hafa out that out, out the equation entirely. Okay. Just just okay. just in just just Google, um, you know, uh, as far as a map of Israel. I just okay. want I just want it, uh, the visual to you know um, to see to sink in. Um, right above that port, that major port. Hold on, let me change this. Let is me the do city this. of Tyre. And the Lamentations are for the city of Tyre, and that is a metaphor or a reference to the port cities, the port cities. And why am I why am I pinpointing Haifa? Haifa. But because I know Homeboy was talking about it specifically. Your boy, he, your boy. He, yeah, not Netanyahu. Okay. He was um. <laughs> exactly. He was the person talking. It goes in the half of this and half of that and blah blah blah. Let me see if I can just see. That, this that's his. That's his prized possession. That's his. That's his pride and joy, man. Because that. Oh yeah. Because if you don't have a major port city, you're really not hitting on much in this global, uh, you know, economy. Mm-mm. Can you see that? That you can't see that. Good mercy. Well, just just pull up a map. Just pull up a map of Israel. Just okay, pull up a map of that. Israel. Let's do that. And then, um, and then zoom in, and then look right north of Hafa. You you uh, you're gonna see um. You're gonna see the city of Tyre, and I'm just using that as a reference point to let you to let you know to let you see. Okay, let me see if I do National Geographic if they'll let me see their map. Um, let's right go there. by just all. I don't want to use images. Let me just do all. So Israel map. If I do this and see what happens, if they allow me to see just the map itself. Go to map. Okay. Go to map. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah. You know what? That's right. Watch my figure maps will let me do it too. But anyway, I found something. So let's just see if this will allow me to make it larger. And Google Maps is what I was going to say. Ooh, this is horrible. Syria, Jordan, the West Bank, Israel. Okay. Let's do Google Earth. Sorry. That's the only way I could do this. Google Earth. Okay. No, I don't want to explore nothing. Not Nathan. Yeah, explore. Right. Yeah, yeah. Can you see this now? No, I'm not on that side. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at. I'm, I'm I think everybody at. else can see it though. So let me put in Israel new. What the freak? What no, the freak? just no, just go to Google. Okay. Just go to Google. We're gonna do this together. All right, go to go go to Google. <laughs> okay. Hold on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you guys see this? Please tell you me. won't do it. You won't do it. You just okay, okay. That's fine. I don't wanna. I wanna okay, try okay. it. So okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. So um so zoom in. Okay. Zoom in. I am in the way. To the to the uh, west coast of of Israel. So the west is going to be over here. You see where Jordan is, and, and then and the then go, no, go 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 by the go go by the um Haifa. yeah yeah yeah. So Beirut, go, go north, go north, go going, north, triple go north, go north, go okay. north. Going, going. Okay, I don't know if I'm in real time. I don't know if I'm in real time. <laughs> okay, so, well I haven't. So, so, so zoom in. So zoom in. I'm looking Zoom at in. Aleppo. Zoom into what? Yeah, no, no, no. Go back down to Israel. Go back down okay. to Israel. And I'm not in real time, so uh, I'm not looking at you in real time. So forgive me. So, okay, um, so there's Haifa right there. Yeah. So so just above, you'll see it. Tire, tire. You got to zoom in. So I see Beirut. Okay. Let me let me zoom in at Haifa. What is the new name of Tire? Tire. Tiberius. Tire. Tire. If you if. Okay, so Tyre is just between Haifa and Beirut. There it is. Exact, exact middle. Tyre. I got it. I'm there. You see that? You see yeah. that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, according to Netanyahu, he wants all of that. 
he wants he wants dominion over all of that. He's trying to get all of that. He wants he wants uh he wants Jordan. He wants Lebanon. He wants us. He even wants Syria. He definitely wants the um the Golan Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, he definitely wants uh, the West Bank. And of course, you know, um, the issue going on in Gaza. Uh, but all of that is because of the IMEC. Mm -hmm. All of that is because of that. He wants all of that. I mean, it's going to boost um, a, a countrywide national GDP. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to ensure that they have a dominant pre because money money talks mm -hmm. that's going to ensure that they have the dominant presence in that region and uh what's fascinating is that the scriptures are telling you that tire is going down mm. tire is going down and when it goes down you're going to be singing lamentations to it. Never again will you hear the harpist play his harp. Never again will you hear the songster sing his song. Never again will you be, uh, it's just going to be smoke burning forever and ever and ever when it goes down. And, mm -hmm. when, and when it go, look, when that's why it's the end times. That's why it's the quote unquote end of the world, because it is the end of the financial world as we know it. Mm hmm. And once, you know, once your money doesn't mean anything, now what? And that's what's actually going on. But they have. A, 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 well, that's what's actually going on, you know, biblically. Uh, but as far as why I'm pinpointing this port right here is because of the IMEC. The IMEC is what they are establishing. Like right now. The Indian, the, the India Middle East European Economic Corridor. And they're establishing this right now. Look it up. Well, I'm sure a lot of uh, people know this, but what I'm saying is connecting the dots and tying in these things is on a whole other level. And when we do, when we when we understand what's going on, we understand like we now we know what, what I'm saying specifically when I say follow this money. When you follow this money, we're on something totally different. So um, I'm I'm going to ask if I can share my screen. Well, I've got the uh, India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor up right now. <clears throat> share your screen. And as you're looking to share it, I'll go ahead and start to read here. The India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor is a planned economic corridor that aims to bolster economic development by fostering connectivity and economic integration between Asia, <clears throat> excuse me, the Persian Gulf and Europe. The corridor is proposed from India to Europe through the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, and Greece. Signing date and place on September 10th, my birthday, 2023, the Memorandum of Understanding, or MOU, was signed during the 2023 G20 New Delhi Summit <laughs> by the governments of India, United States, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, France, Germany, Italy, and the European Union. The project was launched to bolster transportation and communication links between Europe and Asia through rail and shipping networks and is seen as a counter- to China's Belt and Road Initiative. The memorandum of the understanding document has only mapped out the potential geograph geography of the corridor and will compete against the Suez Canal. Case in point to the Suez Canal, <clears throat> remember when we were basically babysitting, according to them, quote unquote, babysitting the Suez Canal and then handed it back to them when it had absolutely no hope of going any further and had all the blockage up here a couple of years ago where it was not receiving any, it, it was like, uh, what happened when they had like something was stuck? Wasn't something like a ship was stuck in the Suez Canal? And then it was like before then they had already thrown it back to them for them to handle it themselves. Don't forget that piece. It says the project has been delayed due to the 2023 Israel-Hamas war. However, it's not. The reason why you see that is because they're clearing the way. 
So they never, by they, I mean, they never do anything <laughs> with just showing, with just showing one reason for something. They will strip down a, a, you know, a cow till it ain't nothing. Even the hoof has a reason. You know what I mean? Every piece of it has a reason. So it's going on now, even though they say, oh, it's been delayed. No, this is how it's getting done. Right. So they're getting rid of whom they don't like. And they're also getting ready to build. They're making the infrastructure because you got to have that way cleared. All right. In September of 2023, the Turk, this is a reaction. 2023, September, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Ed, uh, Edrogan criticized Edgor, or Ed Erdogan, Erdogan. Isn't that the cat's name up there in New York? Anyway, criticized the project for bypassing Turkey and has vowed for an alternative route the Iraq Development Road Project, which all roads are going to lead to Rome, no matter what you do. Every single bit of this is all leading to Rome. And I don't mean the literal phys physical Rome you're thinking about. I'm thinking about all roads lead to the same place for them, which is envisaged to connect the Persian Gulf to, with Europe through a railway and highway via ports in the United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and Iraq, including the under construction Grand Fa port. Everything is dealing with ports. Nothing is not dealing with ports because the port cities are the, the ports are the way to commerce. The ports are the way to commerce. Okay, Ronnie, let's see what you want to share there. Got it. I see it. You see this map the stage. Yep. So this is the IMAC map. This, this is, this is what the game plan is. Um, all of over there in the East and the far East, instead of using China's um, belt and road and, and the infrastructure that they've implemented, we're going to do a workaround and we're going to bring everything down to Mumbai in India. Oh, yes. And then from there, which is a major port hub, major, major, major port hub, we're going to go to the United Arab Emirates. So that's the only, that's the only sea route. Like we're by, and if you notice that this map, um, we're bypassing the Red Sea entirely. Why and do you it, think that's significant? This, this, this is very significant. This is very significant because, be, okay, listen, who do we have? Who is the only, basically, besides Israel, nation that we have good uh, standing with over there in what they call the quote unquote Middle East? Saudi Arabia, everybody else mm -hmm. we have issues with uh, Iran, Yemen, no matter what it is, Iraq, uh, like like we, we don't have excellent rapport with them politically. Mm -hmm. um, if, if anything, uh, you know, we, we might be standoffish or, you know, neutral, cordial, if you will. But we have an excellent relationship with Saudi Arabia. Um, Israel in this India, Middle East, Europe cor um, um, uh, corridor, economic corridor that they're implementing is going to bypass all of those nations, all of those nations entirely. And which is why, if you ask me, that's why that they're they're having the beef that they're having in the uh, in the Red Sea right now. Mm -hmm, they're retaliating. Right. Mm -hmm. They're retaliating against what's uh you know the undermining of what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Netanyahu is. In, in in full charge of this initiative. He's the one, well, behind the scenes, you know, you know, they, and by they, I mean they. Them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they the ones, they did it. <laughs> but they're, but, um, but he's the one that is, that is championing, championing this initiative. So you go to uh, k the king mm -hmm. um, in the United Arab uh, Emirates, and that's going to be a major port in a major hub for everything. That is the first, that's the first uh, um, touchdown landing spot for everything in the East, in the Far East. So he only stands mm -hmm. to make money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. huh. The king, because it's going to the king's port. Absolutely. And then from, there, from there, what they're going to do, they're building a land bridge. They are bypassing because right now, from Mumbai, they have to go down into Aqaba. They have to go down here into, uh, um, down here by Yemen, and then come in around the Red Sea, and then go up that canal, and then come out of Port Said, which is Egypt. 
and then now you're in the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. I hope you're following based oh, on. Oh, I'm myth. tracking. I'm tracking. Okay. okay, but we're gonna bypass that whole thing, and we're just gonna. It's, what we're gonna do is we're going to go directly to the United Arab Emirates, and then we're gonna set up shop through Saudi Arabian desert. Right now, currently, they are building. Listen to this, a $26 billion land bridge mm -hmm. from the United Arab Emirates. And then of course they got to go to their to to um to to their um capital city. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's gonna go through their capital city straight up to Haifa. Mm. <laughs> Nothing is by accident. And, but this is the thing. You don't hear a lot about the West Bank, but they got to go through the West Bank to get there. Mm -hmm. So the alternative is to go through Gaza because Gaza has a port too, but they're not allowed to use it. Mm. Mm. So wow. if you ask me, there are there, there there's there's stuff going on behind the scenes as to why there's there's actual conflict going on that that has nothing to do with you know, the general public uh, um, perception and or mass media approach to the narrative, mm -hmm. which there always is. But I mean, I'm specifically laying out via this map what specifically what it is. This is I think this is the ball game. And mm -hmm. then, of course, from Haifa, we can bypass Egypt. We didn't hit Iran at all. We didn't hit Iraq. All we did was partner with uh, our longtime partner Saudi Arabia, and you know, and 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 we and they have all the oil anyway. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and um, you know, uh, the United Arab Emirates, and then uh, of course uh, Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, they get a piece of the pie, but they're but they are they're beyond imagination rich over there. So you know, it's good to partner with them mm -hmm. and. All they understand is the language of money anyway. So um, if if we can find a way to bypass the current status quo and then create our own, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm game. I'm, I'm game for that. And this is exactly what's going on. So, so now that we hit the port at, at Israel, it's straight Mediterranean Sea. From there, we're going straight to Greece. And then from Greece, we're going straight to Italy. From Italy, we're going straight to Europe. From Europe, we're going straight to New York, straight to uh, the port of Norfolk, the port of Virginia, straight to the port of Baltimore. Straight mm. to <laughs> And we bypass because right now, what this, what this um what this uh map isn't showing. Um, I guess if you pulled up the world map like you were trying to do, <laughs> <laughs> forget you, Ryan. But, 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 but no, that's on me. But 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 listen, what we're doing now is we're going from Mumbai, and we and we have to go all the way down the port of uh, the, the the Horn of Africa, all the way down south um, to you know um, uh, South Africa, around there, and then travel all the way back up the Atlantic to hit Miami. Hmm. And then Miami to Savannah, and then Savannah to you know maybe Charleston to the to the to the port of Virginia to the port of Baltimore to the port of uh, New York, mm -hmm. and then back to um, uh, either Africa or back to um, uh, 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 the European nations. Uh, and that's what we're and that's what we're having to do, and that is causing uh, the costs to double and triple even. Mm -hmm. Um, but we can bypass it, and there are like if you do the research, you'll see them building right now this land bridge, and it's this. So, what's the land bridge? It's a massive rail system. Mm -hmm. It's a massive rail system that's going straight through the desert, and they're building right now as we speak. Just railroad, 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 railroad. So this thing is not just a myth or a uh, uh, you know. Uh, a, a nice pie in the sky that maybe one day will they're aiming for this. And in the meantime, they have to get the infrastructure. Uh, Israel has to lay down, you know, the, the, the foundation and maybe they need Gaza. Maybe they need the West bank. Maybe they need a portion of, um, of Jordan mm -hmm. to accomplish their goal. Maybe they even need that nice little um, chunk over there by the, by the Suez canal. And then they, um, maybe they need Port Said itself. Mm -hmm. That's all yep. I'm saying. So mm -hmm. this is, I think this is the game. 
well, this is the game, but I think this is the game that is actually um, uh, causing the trade with the, the winds of mm -hmm. the current climate in mm -hmm. the in the global politics. Hmm. I have to agree. <laughs> I have to agree. I, and I believe that because it wouldn't, you know, listen, all of these pieces all go together. And unless you're really focused on it and unless you're really privy to what it is that the plan is, see, that's the important thing is understanding there's a plan. Once you begin to, once you know there's a plan and you begin to see the pieces come together, then it doesn't, nothing should shock you. And I know that everybody here, you know, nothing shocks you, but <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, what I've just finished up off the topic uh, is putting together everything for you guys as far as the um, as far as the notes, the liner notes that are going to be inside here for all of the reference points. Everything that we've cited today is all going to be down below in the description, all the way to something that we just touched base on that Ronnie just touched base on. And that's this right here, the Abrahamic Accord. Hold on just a moment. Let me let you guys see this because this is very important. And when you get this, I want you guys to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see the downloads from the declaration that's affixed, Israel-Bahrain agreement, and then it's going to also have the Israel and Morocco agreement. It's also going to have Israel and the UAE, the Sudan agreement as well. So all of these agreements, which are exactly what we're talking about right now, is going to be down below in the description because I just uh, picked them all up off of this little thingy right here and I'm going to drop them down in there in a few minutes and, as far as the whole video was concerned so that you have it. But when you look at anything, it's always going to give you the face of what it is, right? The same way that we talked about that uh, MTA uh, mall, that mall that's being, you know, that now this company is being sued for, uh, saying that they want to close down because of all the robberies and the break-ins. These things all have a reason for being built. Nothing is ever what it seems. It may come out, well, we we're going to do this for your health and your safety and your security. Monitoring this point right here, and that is what was told to the New Yorkers when they pulled the, um, the uh, whatchamafigums in there instead of the police. You got a whole police force that you could have go down into the subways, but instead you take from your state resources and you pull your state resources. And the, and, and the fact about it was when they put those soldiers down in the subway, they only did it for one hour and then they closed up shop and then they went away and then they came back. So it was not this constant presence and it wasn't where any of the offenses were taking place. None of them were on the actual trains. They were at a place checking regular citizens. That's what you, people need to realize. All of this stuff is a piece of the big plan. And the big plan, of course, is to have everybody under martial law, because if you see troops underground, that's an extension of a martial law type thing. So you've got all these folks that are now thinking, oh, we're going to be safe. Yes, it's for your safety and your security. But you're giving up all your freedom. You're opening up your backpacks. And you're just trying to get to work, man. You ain't going to listen. The cash that you need to be getting is the cash that you let over here. But of course, because this is really the plan to get my mind prepared for me to be searched every single where I go in the police state. I got to give up my freedom. Meanwhile, you got the catch you brought over here that's unfortunately cutting people's throats, literally the conductors on these trains, uh, you know, molesting and bothering the people who are on these trains. You're going after these people who are on the trains, on the train, but we're going to run this and it's going to be the governor's call. It's not going to be the mayor's call, who it should be. It's going to be the governor's call. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's the governor's call. So all of this stuff, including the Abrahamic Accords, is going to be down below in the description for you guys to ponder over a little bit later. And um, I'm going to tell you, these are some amazing times. Please, if you've not already seen that movie that I referenced a few times, go and see it. If you don't have, you know, uh, watch my figure, if it's not given to you for free with your telephone company like mine is, I got it for free. Uh, through T-Mobile gives you a few of these little companies that you're not going to pay for, right? That's Netflix. They give you Hulu and then they give you I, uh, I, whatever TV, the eyeball TV. <laughs> What's that company? The I Apple, Apple TV. So that's how I see it. 
And so if you guys get that and you have that, get them to give you your free thingy and then you don't have to pay for it because you're already paying your bill and go on the, go there and look for Leave the World Behind because all of this plays a role, but don't look at the movie without getting a plan to get on. They just had another subway shooting the other day, even with all the checkpoints. Well, you know what, El Chavez, with your pretty thumbnail, they're, they're not, th those checkpoints really are of no consequence because the checkpoints have nothing to do with what's really going on. It has nothing to do with what's really going on. That's the sad part. Those people are not on the trains. They are standing there with tables. And as they're standing there with the tables, the tables are checking people randomly. So maybe every 30th person or every 11th person, those are the people who are, who are popping up. Okay. So inside logistics is what Ronnie has just pulled up. Go ahead and share this with us. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking, you know, on that on that note, these logistics are very telling. Are extremely telling and you have you have to follow the money and you have to follow the trail. And uh okay, let me let me pull it up on my end so I can I can read this real quick. Um so the Zim line, you know what the Zim line is? The Zim line is a shipping line. And, and why I'm talking about this is because um, we just talked about the IMEC and who is champion, championing that IMEC. It's the prime minister of Israel. The Zim line is the shipping line, is the Israeli shipping line. It's called the Zim. Uh, Zion's, it's, it's Zion. It's, it's the, the, uh, the Zion shipping um, company. Uh, so, um, and like you said, hitting the nail on the head, everything deals with maritime in the end times. I'm going to say that again, very adamantly and very staunchly. Um, everything is dealing with maritime in the end times. Zim Israel moves uh, moved its North American headquarters to Norfolk, Virginia. I need you to understand this because Logistically, Norfolk, Virginia is that it's it has the biggest naval base in the world. It has it has one of the largest um uh port uh uh shipping ports in the uh, in North America, um outside of New York. Um they moved to 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 Norfolk, Virginia just uh earlier this year. They moved from Norfolk, Virginia to Virginia Beach, um, Virginia. Uh they have this grand um uh, uh palatial um, headquarters now, but uh, they moved in Norfolk, Virginia. So can you see this? Can, can you see this? The screen, the screen? Cause I want to show you when they did this, you see this, right? This yes, was where it says Zim Israel. Moves its North American uh, uh, base headquarters to Norfolk, <laughs> Virginia. And look at, uh, look when this was, this was in 2001. Mm-hmm. So check it. So Zim's um, North American headquarters, mm -hmm. the North American headquarters of Zim is Israel Navigation uh, <laughs> Company Limited, the world's ninth largest shipping company, will be moving to Norfolk from New York. Mm -hmm. Zim American uh -huh. Israeli uh -huh. Shipping Company Incorporated will be relocating from the 16th floor of the World Trade Center in Manhattan mm -hmm. to a 6.2 million dollar building in the lake right executive center in norfolk and what month of 2001 was so let me, let me go ahead and tell you so let me, <laughs> so let me go ahead and tell you oh. this took place mm -hmm. Mm -mm. the company expects to mm -hmm. open mm -hmm. its new building by september 4th and will eventually employ 235 people. So this is what I'm going to emphatically say. The Zim line <laughs> moved its North American headquarters mm -hmm. to Norfolk, Virginia from the World Trade Center on September 4th, mm -hmm. 2001. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. One mm -hmm. week before the infamous Mm -hmm. 
September 11th, 2001. Mm -hmm. One week to the date. Mm -hmm. How are they in the know to do this? They're just so brilliant. You know, I mean, some of these people are so insightful. They just know exactly what needs to be done, what it needs to be done. And I'm sure they had absolutely no idea what was going to go on. But the fact is, they're brilliant. I mean, come on, so Ronnie. They're, they're, and, then, and, then, and then NATO just moved their uh, North America, uh, their headquarters, Na NATO. Mm. The NATO moved mm -hmm. their north, uh, uh, moved their headquarters to Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia is going is it seems like that's going to be the, the hub. Yeah, that and a part of Colorado uh, is a big part and, of Colorado. And the Baltimore port um, is, you know, um, more. Uh, I was going to say efficient, but I don't mean that is is more um, is is what uh, has more business. Commerce and, coming through, uh, yeah, as as well mm -hmm. as New York in comparison to the Port of Virginia, but you see what they're doing with New York. You're speaking mm -hmm. on it. You're you're mm -hmm. continuously speaking on it, mm -hmm. and then you see what they just did with Baltimore. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, man. So oh, yeah. so, it's, so so you got to follow the money, and then the players, and it always seems to be one particular. Um, well, I'll, I'll end there. I'll end there. No, add what you need to. You, 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 you know what I'm saying. You, you know <laughs> what I'm putting down. But, that, oh, but, but that's, yeah. that, that's crazy information to know. Yeah, it is. September 4th, they opened up in Norfolk, Virginia. And then a week later, they dodged mm -hmm. a major bullet. They dodged it. I'm just telling you, man, they're insightful. These individual individuals are just so insightful. <laughs> Uh, uh, Salvatore Dali did a painting called The Broken Bridge. Salvador Dali, that's who my sister just said that Salvador Dali did a painting called The Broken Bridge. It's amazing how well their crystal balls work, LOL, exactly. I mean, you know what I mean? It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's really, it's, wow, they're just so insightful. They're so insightful. Yeah. So, you know, you guys, I want to thank all of y'all for hanging out, taking out your lunch breaks and the time that you had to hang out with us today. It means a lot to me. And so I just want to tell you guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, Ronnie, I appreciate you all the time. If there's more you want to share, please take the time and give it to us right now. Um, but I just want to tell you guys all of the links that we just had, except for the two that you had, Ronnie, send those to me so that I can put them in because I did it. I did it while we were chatting. I stuck everything down there so that we can look at it for ourselves. Remember, it was so much pouring on me at one time because I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I've been talking about. But look at this and look at that and look at this. I was like a kid in a candy store with every possible direction that I could possibly go that I couldn't read everything to you, but those links are down below and you'll be able to go from everywhere from the Abrahamic Accords all the way through everything else that we've talked about today. And, and please understand that there is so much information when you juxtapose the, the times of the day to biblical text, to the biblical Absolutely. text. We use the Old Testament. A lot of people are very familiar with the Revelation 18, which we I even did a video on, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, utilizing that passage from that, um, from that book and the, and the chapter. But if you look at Ezekiel 26 and Ezekiel 27, as well as several other places, um, you will find that there is a lot of information that's mm -hmm. telling you what's coming, that's telling you what's happened. This is all afar off. It's not for that particular time. It's all vision of what's to come. Ronnie, you have anything to add? Well, 2030 is right around the corner. 2030 and, is right around the corner. You know, that there's agendas and due dates and show and prove uh, dates for 2030. So that what is that? That's seven years. It just happens to be seven years from now. Mm. Okay, so, so let's do this. Let's do this. Go. So, pay, so I got pay, something I want to say. Okay, well, I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say, pay attention to the uh to the drought, the seven years of drought. Um, and then prior to you got the seven years of plenty when you need to hustle, get your hustle on, get yourself together, because after that, there's seven years of famine and devastation. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in the in the, in the years of get yourself together. Seven years. It's incumbent upon no. you. I want to say this. I got to say this. 
whether you're voting for this cat or not, it's of no consequence. I don't have a dog in that hunt. You guys already know I don't vote anymore. But the one thing that I will say is this. If this cat comes back in like we feel he might, seven years is significant. Three and a half years of plenty. Three and a half years of who the heck is this you voted in? If you thought the last three and a half years or four years, however you want to say it, was amazing at best, you ain't seen nothing yet. If this cat is the cat. Or if this cat plays a role in the cat. I'm just saying. But the three and a half year mark is important. And from now to 2030, seven years, divided in half, you got three and a half on each side. Some significant and key points to factor in. The first thing I remember, there's a many others, but one thing that comes to mind is I'm the chosen one. And that's a quote, he says. And by him, I mean, Mr. Naranga, Mr. Orange. I'm the chosen one. I'm the chosen one. Remember the coin with his face and the syringe and a few other things going around it. Remember these things. Remember these things. That's another piece. Another part is the, are the Abrahamic Accords and how his hairless cat son-in-law that went from looking like a dude to, you know, ah, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to, Xerxes out of the 300, he went from looking like a man to Xerxes minus the nose ring and the earring. He had something to do with that. This is that time. This is that. I'm not saying anybody is the Antichrist. What I'm saying is there is the Antichrist spirit in the land right now. That spirit exists and has. I'm just saying, pay attention, because right now he's being persecuted because it's just like you could be persecuted. Hey, I'm up here in New York and this happened to me. It could happen to you too. But I'm taking the brunt of it because I am who I am. Because I'm the chosen one. Y'all better wake up. Pay attention. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. Um, okay, let's see. Yesterday, the U.S. refused to sign on to allowing the slaughter in the Middle East in the U.N. vote. Don't they know there's consequences for opposing the agenda? Mm. You never know. Okay, you guys. Take care, you guys. Remember to stay blessed and think of yourself first before you think of anybody else. Take care of you before you think. And take, think don't think about taking care of nobody else. Take care of you first. So that way you can render aid to others. Ronnie, is there anything that you'd like to say before we end? Yeah, I just want to leave on, on, on this note, um, being that the end times are upon us uh, one way or another. Um, definitely look at the fig tree and look at all the trees. Mm. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Yah, is at hand. The kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. is near. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for being here. You know, you guys, y'all have always blessed me just your presence, your comments, and everything that you have to say. And today has been no different. I want to thank all of you who watched this from the beginning. And for those of you who are watching in the replay, for those of you who have not had the opportunity to make a comment during this actual session, won't you double back and just leave a comment once we're done? All of your comments, your likes, and all of the sharing actually helped to push this video out. Now, there are a lot of people who are maybe handling this video <clears throat> or this incident from a different perspective. But as you know, here, we like to come from another perspective. And although it's a very you know, trying time and although this is a very bad situation, we know that if we look up and where, where our hope is coming from, we really don't have to worry about anything because there's nothing you can do to the physical body when you belong to him that can ever harm you. So all the stuff that we see, everything that we are looking at right now is just an indication that who we know is real is real. 
That's all this is. But it's also a very exciting time because we know to look up for our redemption draws near. And that's the most important piece. Take care of yourselves. Then you can turn around and take care of everybody else. And I want you to remember this one thing. Take care of my friend because the next time I see y'all, I'm going to ask y'all, y'all been taking care of my friend because my friend is you. Before we close, we're going to close, obviously, with my good friend's barbecue. And if you purchase some, let me know. Hey everyone, it's me, Felicia, of the Lockhart Perspective and Headlines with a Voice. I want to tell you a little secret. This is what I used to do, because I don't do it anymore. I would go to the store, buy the barbecue sauce, pour it inside of a bowl, put a whole bunch of different spices, a dash of brown sugar, a dash of maple, and a dash of mustard, stir it all around, and everybody would be like, oh my gosh, this is the best, this is the best. But I was exhausted after all of that, and a lot of times I couldn't remember how many dashes of what I put in it. But I don't have to do that anymore because now I just go to Judge Joe Brown's website and I order his three pack of bottled barbecue sauce. It is by far the best. And I do mean the best barbecue sauce I've ever eaten. And when you go to his website and you order his three pack, you'll see exactly what I mean. Head on over to JJBBBQ.com and order Judge Joe Brown's barbecue sauce. You'll be glad you did. And you're going to tell me about it. I know you will. The lack of perspective.